Just before the New York Auto Show, we asked you guys to submit questions that you wanted us to ask the manufacturers. Well, in New York, Andre and Emmy got crazy busy, and I was at the Easter Jeep Safari in Moab with Nathan, so we didn't get to those questions, but we always like to fulfill our promises, so here are your questions, and I'm here at the Denver Auto Show, where as you can tell, it's not that busy. So I'm gonna ask your questions. Now, there's a little caveat here. Keep in mind that a lot of these questions we don't ask because we know the answer will be we don't talk about future products or we don't know. So I suspect you're gonna get a lot of those kinds of answers. Anyway, those questions are coming up right now. All right, Paul, um, you are the victim here. <laughs> <laughs> now keep in mind, these are questions that our viewers and readers submitted Okay. Uh, regarding uh, the brand new truck that is spinning behind us, the new Tacoma. Fantastic. So let's get some facts out of the way first and foremost before we get to the questions. Okay, right? let's, let's so, see. So tell me about the truck. Just give me kind of a, a quick one minute synopsis of it. What makes it new and what makes it better? So the Tacoma is a ground up redesign from our 2015, our previous generation. It's been 10 years in the making. It's a great truck for all your outdoor enthusiasts, your thrill seekers, Anybody who wants to really get into the mountains that we have here in Colorado, that's this truck. Completely redesigned from the ground up. All right. And then besides being redesigned, is it more powerful? Is it less thirsty? What else well, are we talking about? It? You know, I'd love to be able to tell us how thirsty yeah. it is or what the uh, the power of the, engine, uh, the new engine is. Unfortunately, none of that has been uh, divulged to us as of yet. We do know it does have a new motor. It's a 3.5 liter V6, but that's all I know. All right, that leads to the first question. Alan Ta asks, will there be a turbo in this vehicle or any other Toyota trucks? You know, I, I have not been told of any turbo coming out for this truck. All I do know is that, again, we have a new 3.5 liter V6 direct injection, and what the horsepower and torque is going to be in the fuel economy, we're not really sure yet. All right, now I'm going to test your product knowledge. Okay. All right, because James Brady wants to know, will the 2016 Tacoma TRD off-road come in leather and a sunroof? You know, that I don't know as well either. Uh, what we do know with the TRD off-road is that it does have some pretty new uh, features as far as the four-wheel drive. You've got a multi-terrain select that you'll be able to use and also a crawl control. As far as leather, I, I have not been given that information yet. All right, and this one I know you're not going to know, but I'm going to ask it anyway. That's fine. <laughs> because it's an engine question. Yep. So uh, will you uh, be putting any diesel engines into the Tacoma or the Tundra? You know, that's a very good question. Uh, diesel does come up uh, in a lot of things, and unfortunately, we've got no, no time frame or any specs as far as whether we're going to put a diesel in this or in a Tundra later in the future. Fair enough. You know the towing capacity? That that we don't know because we do uh, certify all of our vehicles to the SAE uh, tests that we have. So I assume we haven't had that actually tested yet to make sure we have the final results. All right, and this one I think you know. When can people buy? So this truck will be available in a September October time frame. It will be ready in all the different configurations that we have about that time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you. And there'll be more questions coming up next from different manufacturers. All right, Andrew, uh, we've had our viewers submit questions um, for their favorite Subaru vehicles. I've got three of them, so let me start with the last one first. What about a small pickup truck like a Brat? Anything like that happening? <laughs> we, we did plan that segment once with the, well, twice actually, with the, yeah. the Brat and then later the Baja. You know, we're continually evaluating uh, consumer interest and consumer demands, but currently there's just really nothing on the, on the table as far so as that no, segment. no, like, fun little seat in the back where you can, you know, ride shotgun? <laughs> it's a little tough to do that today. <laughs> it was a little easier to do that in the 70s. Get yeah. away with a whole lot more then. You know, I've been actually looking around... Uh, unlike Craigslist for Bratz, and they're starting to come up in price again, especially the really nice original ones, the first generation ones, right? Absolutely, there's definitely a cult market for those. Yeah, people yeah. are really starting to catch on to those. Yeah. All right, people want to know, will Subaru make a turbocharged Outback? We really don't comment on future products. Again, it's, it's kind of the same answer, that uh, we, we are evaluating consumer demands and consumer interest, but it's really not something I can comment on right now. So my, my journalism instinct says that's a yes. Take that for what it's worth. <laughs> I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last question is, will Subaru make a larger three-row crossover? Uh, a la the Tribeca, of course. That one I can comment a little bit more on. Yeah. You know, we did play in that segment at one point with the Tribeca, and it is something, a segment we are looking to be in again in the relatively near future. So stay tuned on that one. We, we definitely will be back there. So once again, my journalism, that sense says that's a yes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that one I can agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here are the questions that our readers have submitted. 
first and foremost, Eric M asks, why Ford does not bring diesel engines to US, to the F-150? Uh, Eric, question. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. I mean, as Eric knows, we do diesel really, really well at Ford. Um, we don't have it here right now in the US, but it's something we're always thinking about different ways, more innovative ways that we can have engines and fuel efficiency. And, you know, we're always looking at diesel when we can make it work, you know, stay tuned. So um, Mike Sargent wants to know, maybe this is because of the recent uh, uh, concept uh, Lincoln that you guys showed in New York. Will Ford get a larger rear wheel drive sedan like the Lincoln Continental? So Does he like it? Well, we're talking like up. I guess he's talking about you know the next size up after Taurus. I think anything is possible. We do rear, rear wheel really well, yep. and I hope that he likes the Continental. We're really excited about that, and I think that there's going to be more goodness to come based on the concept there. Fair enough. So uh, Steve Morales wants to know, why not use aluminum in the Ford Mustang? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the military grade aluminum that we use in the F-150, mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a starting point for us. But as all of your viewers know, that light weighting is the key to everything. And so you saw the GT with a carbon fiber. We've got a concept focus that has a lot of carbon fiber. We've got the F-150 with a military grade aluminum. In other words, Everything is on the table, but I would love to have an aluminum Mustang, wouldn't you? Yeah, especially if it's lighter. It would be faster. Oh my gosh. All right, this is a, a, a commenter whose name is Undefeated 2012. So hopefully <laughs> you were undefeated in 2012. Uh, why not put a bigger EcoBoost into the Fusion and make it a performance sedan? Ooh. If somebody wants a performance sedan. I will be the first in line to buy that one when that happens. But Fusion is a really important vehicle for us. So, um, Stay tuned. So you knew this question was coming, and all it is is Ford Ranger with three question marks. Oh, <laughs> right? I know, I know. Yes. People still love the Ranger. I that, know. That has a long and deep following. I totally agree. And uh, I happened to be in Flagstaff when our Australian team was out there doing some pressure testing of Ranger, and when I saw it there in Flagstaff, Arizona, all it camoed up, I got all excited. I thought maybe someone forgot to tell me the good secret. Alas, it was our Australian team team doing some pressure yeah. testing so um, right now we just feel that the f-150 meets such a need right now and we're finding folks really attracted to that vehicle a brand new f-150 well, yeah it's so, hard to, it would be very hard to bring out two trucks at the same time it is and, stupid and just penciling it in just thinking about the best value for our customers in North America just pricing on it just f-150 just really fits the bill for us all right then since we're friends I'm gonna ask this question myself okay will I ever get to drive the GT <laughs> Because, <laughs> damn, you guys uh, knocked out of the ballpark style-wise oh on that thing. Oh, yeah. my Isn't that awesome? Oh, I know. I, I, my jaw dropped when that rolled out in uh, Detroit. Well, I saw all of your viewers really enjoying all the footage and all the content yeah. that you created on that. It was amazing. We couldn't be prouder. And, uh, you know, we're all going to be standing in line for that, aren't we? Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank, thank you for you. the honest answers. Great questions. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good job. All right, Carol, we've got some questions that um, our readers have submitted. Excellent. Uh, and viewers, so I'm gonna ask you these, and they're pretty straightforward, uh, and some of them have to do with uh, particular trucks, and some are just general. So let's start with the first one. Ram Sam Samuel wants to know, why not build a full-size Dodge SUV on a Ram truck platform? You know, that's a great question. I don't know if you caught it, but somebody actually did a little April Fool's joke and mocked one up uh, last week and was publishing that that's online. That's probably why we got the question. That might be why you got the question. Um, you know, we've looked at that. We studied the idea behind that. We definitely see some overlap with our core customer demographic. Um, we just haven't seen um, enough evidence yet to suggest we need to invest in that platform and do it. So it's something we're studying, but we're just not ready to go forward with it yet. Now, you guys are well known for doing kind of special one-off brands, you know, one-off trucks. They're very, like the Rumblebee, you know, okay. something like that. Sure. So I think this is a question is in that same um, kind of context. Will we see an SRT or Hellcat Ram pickup? So if somebody wants to take the Hellcat engine, yeah. the 707 horsepower engine, and stuff it in one of these trucks, do you see that ever happening? We're not going to do that from the brand. Uh, we really want to focus on the core truck buyer. That's really our focus since we broke Ram away from Dodge five years ago, is let Dodge play in that space where they can go after that enthusiast customer and let us focus on the needs of the core truck buyer and, and stay there. That would be cool. It might be pretty cool, be but really cool. Uh, we're not going to go there just yet. <laughs> All right. Randy Williams wants to know, will heavy-duty trucks get the 8-speed automatic transmission? 
So obviously right now we've got um, an Eisen transmission that's a six speed on our heavy duty trucks that helps us get to that 30,000 pound tow rating. And it's all about capability with those heavy duty trucks. So we're looking at eight speed transmission variants. We want to make sure that they're capable enough though to meet our standards and our customer standards. Um, it's certainly a possibility down the road, but nothing to announce at this point. Fair enough. And of course, William Phillips is asking, why no eco diesel engine in the Rebel? Um, really, based on the off-road nature of that truck, we wanted to get um, the gas engine in it and kind of keep the weight a little bit lighter on that particular platform. And frankly, we're doing everything we can to meet the demand for eco-diesel engines right now as it is. So to then go and put it into another trim level would just diminish what we're trying to already catch up to. We didn't feel like that was the right call so right it's a, now. It's a production capability issue as yeah, well as exactly. kind of a marketing and branding issue. Exactly. All right, this is a question I've always actually um, wondered about. Frank wants to know what happens to concept vehicles after they are done with the auto show? Well, concept vehicles will continue to make the round to different auto shows. Uh, depending on the concept, sometimes we'll park it in our museum and put it as part of our historical collection. Sometimes they get modified into new concept vehicles. And depending on the vehicle itself, sometimes we even got to take them apart and tear them down. Oh, that's got to be painful. It's sad. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be painful. And this is just a standard question. And I don't know, why isn't there more standard equipment on trucks? Wow, it's a great question. I would invite him to come into a Ram showroom and take a look at it. Maybe they're not looking at the, the right, right truck. I know. I'm, you know? I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the limited next door to us, and it's got a boatload of standard. Standard equipment. air suspension, standard nav, remote start, heated and cooled leather seats. So, uh, you know, we try to find the right niche for the right buyer. Some trucks, some truck buyers, they want a bare bones pickup truck. Yeah. I mean, they're asking us to go back to the old school, you know, push and pull levers on the truck and things of that nature. Others want every amenity under the sun. And so that's kind of the way we structure our lineup, depending on where you are in that scale. All right, so here's my question. And we were just kind of playing this game, driving uh, actually a Jeep uh, across the country. So we we're driving a long way and we were kind of bored. So we started thinking to ourselves, you know, a truck, Ram truck specifically, has a lot of engine options. Mm -hmm. What other car, why don't car manufacturers offer the same number of like configurations, right? You can get a truck in almost every configuration. You just said it yourself, right? You can yeah. get the bare bones one, the tradesman, sure. all the way up to the limited, which is everything, yeah. right? So you can get them in different colors, different com configurations, different engine choices. Different cab styles. Yeah, yeah. How come that doesn't work with cars? I'm probably, I'm probably asking the wrong guy. No, it's a great question, actually. Yeah. And when you look at what people use trucks for, it's a little bit all over the map. Right. So somebody buying trucks for their business, they might only need a regular cab truck with an eight-foot bed and bare bones options. But more and more, people are buying crew cab pickup trucks. They're using them as family vehicles. And not only are they family vehicles, but they're families that have some sort of lifestyle component to it where they maybe tow a boat, hunting, dirt bikes, fishing, yeah. hunting, fishing. So the truck has to use or perform a number of different duties. And depending on what they're using that truck for, they're going to want different size cabs, different size beds, 4x2, 4x4. Each buyer's interests are unique. And that's not something you see as much in a sedan yeah. or even a crossover. And maybe that's why you know a truck is the most popular vehicle in America, because it's so stretchable in terms of configuration. Yeah, right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Time. That was great. You Anytime. Great answers. Thanks. Thanks. So like I feared, there were a lot of we can't tell you and we don't know. But you know what? It's great that I had a chance to ask these questions because every so often we can glean some information of future products that we may have not thought about. So thank you for submitting the questions and thanks for watching. As always, this is Roman reporting from the Denver Auto Show for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and answers to your everyday questions. See you next time. Ciao.